As we welcome you back here to Newsmax Prime, we talk about a prevalent story in presidential politics, specifically Senator Ted Cruz picking up a key endorsement in Iowa. Bob Vanderplatz, the president of the family leader, told the Des Moines Register, quote, at the end of the day, we truly believe that Ted Cruz is the most consistent and principled conservative who not only has the ability to not only win Iowa, who has the ability to not only win Iowa, but I believe win the Republican nomination. So what does this mean for Ted Cruz and for the rest of the Republican field as 2016 approaches? And at this time, we need to call on our panel. Skyping in from Connecticut, the former lieutenant governor of the state of New York, Betsy McCoy, and joining me here on the anchor desk, Glenn Downs. Glenn served as chief of staff to Congressman Walter B. Jones of North Carolina. We thank you both for your time. Betsy, ladies first. In Iowa, will the family leader endorsement be enough to have Ted Cruz uh, beat Donald Trump on caucus night? Well, it, it very well could make the difference, and I'll tell you why. Most endorsements in most states don't count. But Bob Vanderplatz is widely regarded in Iowa as a very important thought leader. He holds these breakfasts where all the opinion leaders in the state come and attend and listen to the candidates. I've spoken there myself, and I can tell you getting his endorsement is a very, very big deal. But in addition, keep in mind, Cruz has a chairman in every county in America. He has by far the best ground game going into the caucus and primary season. And Glenn Downs, it is precisely because of that reason, all 99 counties in Iowa where Cruz has people in place, but also just the sheer mechanics of the Iowa caucus. It's not like going in and voting in a primary. No right. question about it. It's just, it takes a great deal of dedication and, and, and commitment on behalf of your supporters to show up. But as you know, one of the things that's really important about this, in addition just to the momentum it's going to give Cruz, is the the idea that there's really sort of a sub-primary going on here, which is that, that, that to be the, the alternative to Donald Trump. Cruz is not the establishment in Washington's cup of tea, but he sure is a lot more palatable to them than, than Mr. Trump. Well, uh, in terms of the establishment and uh, its concerns, uh, yesterday on this broadcast, Patrick J. Buchanan was here saying, Betsy, that the Washington Republican establishment has uh, become unhinged. And out of that, wouldn't you know, it seems that some of those establishment leaders are sitting down to try and plan a brokered convention. Your take on those reports. It's nauseating. Let me be very clear. If the Republican bigwigs in Washington try to, quote, trump the public opinion, override the voters, and make the choice for them, they are going to be in very big trouble. They had a turnout problem in 2012. They'll have a bigger turnout problem this time if they tell voters they're too stupid to choose their own candidate. Let the process work. Glenn, do you share uh, Betsy's concern about the temptation of trying to uh, go into, in the old days, they were smoke-filled rooms. I don't know what we'd call them now with the no smoking ordinances everywhere, but to have a brokered GOP convention? I think they still have martinis in those non-smoke-filled rooms. Okay, so but, martini But th yeah. this is a perfect example of the people in Washington not understanding the Trump phenomenon. The Trump, the, the phenomenon of Trump is a reaction to the people in Washington. That the, instead of at being introspective and asking themselves, what is it about what we are doing and what we are not doing that has caused people to turn to Mr. Trump as opposed to one of us, instead they just want to go attack. And so this will actually fuel the fire uh, behind Trump or Carson or Fiorina or somebody that's not part of their establishment group. Well, this early exposure of this prospect of a brokered convention, uh, sunlight, may prove to be not a preventative, uh, a disinfectant, uh, to quote Mr. Justice Brandeis. Uh, I want to turn to a story, and Glenn, we have this kind of shared experience on Capitol Hill, kind of pulling the curtain back on Congress, a very different story, and that is this whole fiancé visa situation. Uh, right. Members of Congress, in addition to voting on issues and voting on legislation, <laughs> do something called constituent services. And one of the steady constituent services that every member of Congress is called upon to perform is to help people with what, for lack of a better term, no disrespect intended, back in history, mail order brides. 
international marriages. How how much work like that does a congressional office do? Well, as you know from your service in Congress, it's not something that's really, really high profile, but it's steady work. There's a steady process of people trying to bring get visas to bring people over for the purpose of matrimony. Of course, now we're seeing in the news some of those matrimony, matrimonial situations may not be as up and up as, as they might be portrayed. And uh, to that, Betsy, I just have to ask you about, about the, the situation, and we'll try to call Betsy back in. We seem to have some trouble with that connection. And, and I don't mean to be trite about this, but for lack of a better term, in making a love connection, which has been something that, gosh, I remember taking calls personally from constituents. It is a, it is a big, big problem. Betsy, we're glad to have you back here. I, I, you heard what Glenn had to say about fiancé visas. We've got about a minute left. Do you, are, you, are you suspicious that constituent services and this steady work may be one reason why Congress slow walks any changes in the fiancé visa program or the visa waiver program? Well, that may be possible. I don't know how many votes that members of Congress actually get from performing this specific service. But I'd like to go to the bigger issue, which is the law clearly permits the president to restrict immigration or travelers to the United States based on any concerns whatsoever, including religion. So when people assault Donald Trump saying that it's unconstitutional to put up a temporary suspension of Muslim visitors to this country or visitors with any other characteristics at all, whether it's from a country, a profession, religion, a doctrine, whatever it is, the law permits the president to do that. And that is an excellent right point. Here. An excellent point. We thank you for it, and we'll be right back.